Hello and welcome back once again to Rage Gaming and Diablo 4. Or rather, not really Diablo 4, this is more of a discussion and hopeful light-hearted look at Diablo 4's bit of a mess and how that's been a good thing. Maybe not for Diablo 4 and a player playing it long term, but for the ARPG genre as a whole. After all, Diablo 4, no matter what you think, was an absolute success. Insane numbers, a huge player base, I'm sure they're thrilled with the numbers they've achieved even if things have been rocky since. Obviously Diablo 4 did not maintain a high opinion after that, it's a different story. From the fact they ignored the feedback given during the betas, the crazy rebalancing issues they had, clear defined issues in pre-season, into a completely lack of meaningful follow-up in season one. Let's not forget the worst patch I've seen in any game in the lead up to that, where they nerfed everyone and damn near everything fun into the ground and realized they cannot continue doing that after a massive amount of players simply stopped playing. It's not all downhill. Season two was a huge step forward for this clearly unfinished underdeveloped game. Actual end game system in the form of the bosses, the target to hunt down specific loot, a much more functional XP balance, so now most players are actually going to reach level 100 before they stop. That might be mostly the end point for the game right now, but it is better with new systems and more balancing to bring even dead builds online, or at least attempt it. Season 3 by comparison has been blunder after blunder. We hoped it would be continuing to walk forward, and at best it's been a standstill, if not a step back in some cases. Why is that a good thing for the ARPG genre? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. With how successful and influential the Diablo 4 release was, I believe there's a lot of new players trying this genre for the first time. Diablo 4 might not have been my first ARPG, but it's the first I played seriously, devoting many hours of play from start to finish. I'm not alone in this either, and that was made very clear when we were in the lead up to season one, with so many people shocked about that seasonal model concept. The idea that you're going to lose your progress and start fresh, with everyone all at once, and that'd be a normal thing to happen regularly. That's in fact, obviously, a staple for the genre. So with people being shocked and unsure about that concept, it's clear that we had a lot of new people to the genre. Then you have the disappointment of Diablo 4 long term, how you essentially stop progressing alarmingly fast. Before season 2, there was a big section where you felt like you just got weaker. You'd stabilize in world tier 4 at roughly level 70 plus, and then take a huge dip in power until max level and serious build completion. In the current progression, you hit level 100, and then the game kind of ends shortly after. You complete a main build, get the seasonal power upgrade and unlocked and then what? Well, you farm Duriel for the chance at an uber unique because that's pretty much the only way to gain new power. And this grind is essentially killing the same boss over and over, only interrupted by gathering the resources to summon it. It doesn't take long before Duriel is an instant kill, which is certainly not the most fun or interesting after you've done it, I don't know, three times, let alone the 500 plus you're going to be expected to do if you really do want the ubers. Our end game in season three was clearly meant to be the gauntlet. We expected this a lot sooner than season three, but it was delayed to season 3, but now it's been delayed during season 3, and then seemingly delayed again after this funny incident on the Diablo 4 website. If you didn't see it, they actually updated the Gauntlet info section to say February 27th, so a release date for the Gauntlet finally happening again, which was quickly wiped to coming soon instead, not long after. Why did they do it this time? Well, we don't know, but we are wondering if it's because of the upcoming game Last Epoch, a competitor RPG that's finally releasing its 1.0 version and is looking really good. With that release happening on the 21st, maybe they thought it was a better idea not to release the gauntlet on the 27th since they'd lose the wind in the sails with a lot of people sinking their teeth into Epoch instead. Who knows if that's remotely true or if they're even worried about that, but it's interesting to think about. We want competition in the genre and scene because it reinforces the idea that Diablo 4 should and needs to be better. So that's where I tie it all in. What if Diablo 4's post-launch mess has been a good thing for games like Last Epoch? And not to forget Path of Exile 2 later in the year. You've got this massive ARPG that brings in new players en masse, as well as this big new option for old fans and veterans of the genre. There's a lot of eyes on it. Then it proceeds to disappoint in many ways, but now you've got new players with a taste for the genre. People who would now like one that's finished at its launch, that maybe offers more, more depth, more options. Personally, I was feeling this strongly, and so I gave Path of Exile 1 a try for the first time. For a long time, I was intimidated by the overwhelming depth of that game that's thrown at you instantly, but it's now over a decade old. And while my opinion of Path of Exile 1 is that it's fantastic, I do think its new player experience is one of the worst parts about the game. So I've been very excited for the sequel, and also, yeah, other interesting ARPGs that are coming up, like the intriguing No Rest for the Wicked, or much sooner than that, obviously, The Last Epoch. It's clear I'm not alone in this post-Diablo 4 situation, though. It is a very popular topic right now. One video blew up recently all about this by Frost 
Frosty LaRue, titled in jest, Why Diablo 4 Players Hate Last Epoch. Core issues in Diablo 4 and the very way that it's been designed are, are well known. So Frosty went about talking about these issues in a different, pretty clever way. The Last Epoch has been in early access development for years now. It's just finally releasing into 1.0 when it's, you know, not just ready, but more than ready. Core concepts that make an ARPG enjoyable long term already exist in that game alongside lots of clever additions. You can just compare Diablo 4 to Epoch and see. Open the stash in either game and you'll find in Diablo 4 a new stash tab in Season 3, which has thankfully completely solved our overabundance of items we need to keep because there's no other way to store them unless you make a bank halt to fill its inventory. Just kidding. Yep, my stash has been full this whole season. Meanwhile, the last Epoch has over 100 stash tabs. That's more than I'm ever going to need. And it's starting with that. You just add what the player needs and then beyond and then it's never going to be an issue. Wow. What about all the loot that's constantly dropping? Well in Diablo 4 you're going to manually shift for all this useless crap. Every item that drops you're going to have to pick it up and scan its affixes because what if the roll is good? What if the affixes actually have stats that are relevant? Maybe it's even a 3 out of 4 so you're going to have to re-roll 1. You've got to check. Which means you have no choice but to check every item and manually scan it, which is slow as hell. It's insane that there's a massive chunk of the time that I play Diablo 4 spent standing at a blacksmith, staring at items, scanning the bloat affixes just in case there's something relevant. And you know, even if I found something relevant, it's not like my stash isn't already full. All of that is solved with a loot filter, a way to automatically filter out items that drop with stats you don't care about. If it doesn't have the affixes I'm currently hunting based on what I've set, it won't even show it to me when it drops. I don't have to waste time checking anything. You bet there's a filter in Last Epoch. It's a bare minimum standard. But my mind was blown when I first experienced this as, you know, someone more new to the genre when I tried Path of Exile 1. As soon as I used it, I became instantly bewildered that Diablo 4 launched without one. It's a vital component to make long-term play of any ARPG acceptable. But D4 didn't just launch without one, right? We're going into Season 4 with no sight of one. I'm starting to wonder if they're intentionally holding it back until the DLC to make that a feature in a more appealing release. Who knows? But on the bright side, in Season 4, we do have the promised itemization update coming, tackling this insane amount of bloat affixes and cleaning up that system. Hopefully, it'll drastically change what items are good, breathe new life into the game, change the meta. Season 3 has been dangerously just the same thing again with even less content long-term with the gauntlet not being added. If you're unaware, it actually makes sense based on the way this game has been developed. Now, allegedly, there was a massive team that created Diablo 4 as we knew it at launch. Obviously, it needs a lot of work and someone to maintain it. So we went down to two smaller teams to manage the game post-release. While a lot of the team that actually made Diablo 4 are now going on to create the DLC that's coming out, you know, at the end of the year. So we have the live service teams. Team A, who created Season 1 and 3, while Team B created Season 2 and then logically 4. Team B was behind this massive leap forward for the game in Season 2 then, and of course is in charge of the extremely important itemization update. Meanwhile, Team A created that mess of malignant hearts, aka everyone just using Barber Heart, but they also create the vaults, which are certainly neat, but extremely out of touch with, say, the recent system, the odds at which we get the new unique stones, and yeah, the gauntlet that doesn't even exist. It does seem at this point that one team is significantly more reliable than the other, that's for sure, if it truly does work like that. But we can't blame Diablo 4's issues entirely on the live service team. The very core way Diablo 4 was designed and released is so tame and so limited that I've got to reference that video by Frost again here. In that video, there was a section about their skill trees, comparing the two. And in that segment, it was highlighted how two of the same spell in both games exists, and both could be enhanced in different ways. So with Fireball, you could in Diablo 4 choose two options, make it deal more damage or make it deal more crit damage. That's essentially what you get with the skill tree in that game. Two options, maximum. And it feels like, you know, the illusion of choice certainly doesn't feel meaningful. Meanwhile, Last Epoch is offering you an entire skill tree for each skill you might use. Fireball is not going to get two tame options, but tons of interesting ones. It was mentioned how you could turn, say, one fireball into multiple when you cast it, or a plasma ball, or change the fireball to explode on contact for AoE, make it auto home in on targets, turn it into more of a channeled flamethrower style attack. That's one skill and just some of the options for fireball specifically. That is, yeah, actual choice, interesting options, which will change how the ability functions. All of that's awesome. But the tip of the spear for this discussion is, does any of that matter? 
Diablo 4 is extremely popular and extremely successful, even now. While you're looking down the barrel of a $65 mount in Diablo 4, Last Epoch is charging you $35 for the entire game. And then DLC and future updates for completely free. Half the price for everything and everything then on in the future. We'll be paying another $70 for an expansion every year in Diablo 4 by the current plan. Is Diablo 4 that much better than the other ARPGs that, you know, they deservedly cost double the price? How is it that it's so overwhelmingly more successful despite everything? Maybe it's the fact that it's so much simpler and casual friendly that a lot of people are just willing to try it. At its base level, its raw gameplay has this really satisfying feel to it. The polish of a AAA game, simply using abilities and killing things in Diablo 4, it feels consistently good every time. Josh described it to me like it's a Formula 1 car that has no road to actually race on. Incredible at that base, you just wish that you know, more options and more reasons to drive. That the reasons we have now aren't so shallow and sure, ending in extremely simple and mundane experiences like killing Duriel infinitely for uber uniques. There's just this everlasting hope in Diablo 4 that it's gonna get better. We once again have high hopes and expectations for season four, and then especially the expansion. Diablo 4 still has so much promise, it's just they've been failing to deliver on it. So with that in mind, I really hope more people will try Last Epoch and then Path of Exile 2 later in the year, just to see what else is out there and what other ARPGs are really like. If not for Diablo 4, many might not even know the genre, and hopefully it causes them to try other options and breed a higher standard for Diablo 4 because of it. That's why I think D4 is likely good for the genre overall, and games like Path of Exile and Last Epoch, maybe they couldn't ask for better marketing. But yeah, that's been my little discussion about this weird state of Diablo 4, and why I think it somehow continues to be relevant and successful despite the issues it has. Let us know what you think, and yeah, are you going to give Last Epoch a go next week? Until next time then, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.